Welcome back to The Breakfast. Let's now take a look at the papers this morning on Off the Press. The Punch newspaper says, Troubles ahead. Experts warn as debt servicing gulps 91% of revenue. Economists say revenue records 1.07 trillion naira shortfall. Uh, government can sustain rise in debt. We're in serious trouble. Government will borrow more, says Utomi Others. Nigeria records 5.1% GDP growth, economists doubt figure. Insecurity, sit up, salt and autumn, others tell federal government. Bandits may take over villa, government warns. PDP crisis, quartering state secondus leaders retain October convention dates. States conclude NSAS panel sitting, Lagos wraps up in October. Also on the Punch newspaper, Paralympics, I can't eat, says elated gold medalist Jani. Plateau Youth Leader says, I lost my brother, son, house to a Yawa attack. NNPC posts first profit in 44 years. Stakeholders applaud feet. Bandits free Niger Islamic pupils, Zamfara Agri students. Organizers suspend Saudi Arabia's recruitment as DSS disperses doctors, arrests journalists. Columbus abduct, kill Lagos guard over market tussle. And lastly, Autumn's interview, SANs berates NBC for greeting channels TV's presenters. Now let's look at the Daily Independent. Big story there is on the PDP leadership crisis. It says, Secondus fights back. Court restores him as national chair. Atiku resurfaces in PDP 24 months after. Explains self. NBC threatens to sanction Channels TV over Autumn interview. Yakasai urges NUJ, NGE to speak out. And also PDP to Buhari presidency. You, not Autumn, is spreading division and hate. Hoodlums attack policemen conveying murder suspects to Elisa prison. Kill one and others escape with bullet wounds. Still on the Daily Independent, resident doctors vow to continue strike despite court order. Expect three days heavy rains in Kano, Kaduna, others, Naimet warns. And um, on Hosh Poppy, IGP receives panel report on Abakiari. Two other stories this morning. Potakot Airport not safe for flying, stakeholders warn. And Buhari excited as Nigeria's economy grows by 5.01% in the second quarter of 2021. On the Guardian newspaper, surprise, economy gains highest quarterly growth since 2015. Tagina Islamia Popos released eight, eight days after abduction. Be decisive with insecurity, Sultan Ayokunle advised Buhari. NNPC posts first profit of 287 billion naira after 44 years of existence. Nigeria more divided today than it was four years ago, API survey reveals. In new twist, court orders secundus as PDP, court restores secundus as PDP chairman. Discos deny lobbying NERC on eligible consumer policy suspension. Those are the stories on The Guardian. All right, let's now go to the Nation newspapers. How to End Killings by Sultan Christian Elders. Catholic bishops converse new strategies. Government working hard, says SGF. Government spends 2.02 trillion naira on debt servicing, says Budget Office. And also, court restores secundus. Governors OK Akinwumi. Um, and that's with regards to the PDP crisis. Ex-Minister Stella Odua joins APC. Uh, still on the nation, why we are not suspending strike. And that's by doctors. An NPC posts 287 billion naira profit after 44 years law. And the uh, Tejina Islamia school's uh, pupils regain freedom. One more, governors to work with silver panel on PIA gray, PIA's gray um, areas. All right, I'm going to start this morning. Uh, good morning uh, once again, G.D. Johnson. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be good with morning. you. Good morning. Good morning to our viewers all over the world. All right, I'm going to start. Uh, oh, let, let's uh, um, start this morning with the controversy that has um, 
of course, uh, been big news across the, the nation in the last 24 hours, and that is the NBC versus uh, Channels TV um, um, issue. Um, it says here, NBC to, uh, threatens to sanction Channels TV over autumn interview, and uh, Yekasai urging NUJ and NGE to speak out. So let's kick start with your thoughts on that one. The former chairman of um, the former chairman of NUJ in Lagos, Dr. Kasim Akriti, did his PhD on regulation of broadcast of broadcasting in Nigeria and Ghana, and the submission of his thesis is that the government should leave control of broadcasting in the hands of practitioners, just like we have in Ghana, you'll be shocked that in Ghana, Ghana's NBC is controlled by practitioner. It's regulated by practitioner. So I don't know what role government has in the regulation of an industry that is responsible for holding government accountable. And that takes us to the issue of Twitter ban or no Twitter ban. And I did ask my question my student that question in the exam, whether government has the right, whether the executive, not the government in this in the contest, because we would tend to limit the federal government to the executive, forgetting that the judiciary and the legislature are part and parcel of the federal government. That's an elite issue that is perpetuated by the way we have narrated issues around the federal government. Whether they, they have that 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 are, even I had a training with 60 journalists yesterday in Abekut, and I asked them that question. Does government have the power to ban Twitter? Then I change it in another context. Does government have the right to censor the media? That's when it became clear. Should we resort to government censorship or self-censorship? Now, what every time something is said about government, the charlatans in NBC will jump up and they are operating as if they are they are the um, attack dog of of of, of 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 the presidency and not even the federal government of Nigeria. We have seen people that have gone on here to say to spill absolute nonsense, and yet NBC did not. It's it's it's, it's clear that the NBC is, is is partisan, and it's just a matter of time the body will lose its relevance. And then the real, the, the the normal thing will be done with respect to allowing regulators, allowing operators and professionals within the media industry to regulate um, the broadcast sector. I, I ask this question: Are there no laws, extant laws, in Nigerian landscape to take care of anybody that want to engage in misinformation, disinformation, character assassination? Impunging on the integrity of others, libel, slander, and sedition. We have. So if anybody feels aggrieved, the best option for you is to do is to approach the court and let the court rule on the matter. And until the court rule on the matter, an arm of the executive cannot take adjudication because what they are trying to do is adjudication. Adjudication is different from enforcement. Adjudication is the responsibility of the judiciary and it's not the responsibility of the of the legislature or the responsibility of the executive. So NBC is part of the executive. And um we have to be celebrated. And as I, we said it that time but when government just woke up and banned Twitter. That they can just wake up one day and close one TV station and nothing will happen. And that's the degree of the impunity and recklessness, abuse of process, and lack of respect for rule of law, and lack of respect for human dignity that we have witnessed in the last few years from agencies of government under this administration and previous administration in Nigeria since 1999. And that's what has made us to come to the conclusion that Nigeria presently, we are not a democratic society. We are still a civilian government. The fact that we have transited from a military regime to 
democracy, conducting election, the facts on the ground are indicative that we are still there are still vestiges of militaryness in our democratic uh, principle. So we are it's a civilian administration. It's, it's not it's not it's not democracy. And if I give you the features of democracy. And then we use that as the yardstick to measure and evaluate our democratic experience. Then you understand that we are a civilian administration and not a democracy. Because in a democracy, the government will have been taken. Tanners has the right to sue NBC and to ensure that their rights are not infringed upon. Thank you. All right, Mr. John, um, G.D. Johnson. Um, I want us to take a look at the story um, on the Punch newspaper. It says that the NNPC um, posts first profit in 44 years, and that's uh, 287 billion naira, and that um, the stakeholders are applauding this feat, and that the president is excited about that. First time in 44 years. Uh, should we be excited about this? And, um, that, that's a fiery victory. Um, somebody... Um, an organization posted losses in 44 years. And then when they make profit, they didn't make 1 billion, they didn't make 2 billion. All of a sudden, it's over 100, 200 billion in terms of profit. It's wrong. Somewhere, if, if, if you are involved, you should develop a third die and ask question, how, how is that possible for, um, for someone that has zero profit, that made losses? And then we have this astronomical a profit profit margin in one year. Well, um, it, it shows that there is a need for NNPC books to be looked into, and those that need there to be prosecuted to be prosecuted. It means that some certain things were not done in the past, and that they are starting to do to do now. And we should. It's the basic. Should we clap for you for doing your job in Plus TV? Should we clap for the cameraman for doing his job? It's in Nigeria that you clap for a governor for constructing roads, for doing the basic of public governance. What was he elected for in the first instance? If you have to start applauding everybody working in every organization for doing the job they are employed to do, then what time would we have to do the job? Then every one of us will engage in continuous clapping. Why must we clap for, 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 for NNPC for declaring profit? When in the first instance, that's the basic of running that organization. Even those that are operating private uh, um, um, private businesses in the oil and gas. They've been declaring profit. You begin to wonder, Chevron, Total, all other major, major organizations, both in the upstream and those that are operating in the downstream, are declaring profit. But the body in charge is not declaring profit until today. Those that want to clap for them, let them go ahead to clap for them. I don't right. belong to that category because it's the big of what government should do. It is sheer stupidity for anybody to thank a governor for constructing road. It is the level they have, they have, they have, they have, they have insulted our psyche. Our psyche. Uh, can, you, can you imagine Americans gathering together for clapping for Joe Biden for doing infrastructure? Or the British people gathering together for clapping for, for Boris Johnson? That Boris Johnson, you know, thank you for providing railway. And then they bring money, they bring people with pomp and pegatry to do the commissioning. It's only in Nigeria they do commissioning of road. Where do you see that they do commission of road? And they will spend more money commissioning the road than the money they used to build the road. I don't belong to that category. Yeah, but, Why but, should you? Yeah, but I, isn't, it, isn't it something to at least, um, you know, celebrate because of where we're coming from? If they say that in 44 years the NNPC never posted profit and we finally are there, isn't it something to celebrate and, you know, imagine that in the next few years, we will be able to post even bigger profit, you know, of uh, trillions of naira. Well, um, for those that want to celebrate, they should go ahead and celebrate it. But for me, as far as I'm concerned, it's the basic of public government. Government is um, government is run to provide services. People are employed in NMPC to provide those services. If the MD does not have the intellectual capacity and the professional expertise to manage the business, why is he appointed in the first in the first instance? Should NNPC, be, should NNPC be incurring losses? That's the question we need to ask. It's not them. Um, and then don't also forget that different... Um, uh, in the year they have made profit, looking at it, in the year they have made profit, 
it is the same year they have made it they have made series of attempts to increase the price of petroleum petroleum products they have made this, they have made different justification that they cannot sustain it they can now they have declared profit there is something there is something um un unclear about All right, LNG. Okay, let, let's move to something else now, you know, and uh, this is also on the Daily Independent. Um, it's um, saying here that from the PDP to President Buhari, it says, uh, you and not Governor Tom is spreading division and hate. Uh, if you remember in a response from uh, Gar Bashehu to Governor um, of uh, Benue State, uh, Tom, uh, he had, of course, accused him of um, you know, spreading division and hate and, you know, almost targeting a certain group uh, in uh, his uh, state. Um, but the PDP is saying now it's the president, uh, not Governor Tom, who spread in division and hate. Well, um, it's, it's unfortunate that the issue of insecurity does not know the po political party you belong to, does not know the sector you work in, does not know the ethnic group you come from or the state of origin. The issue of insecurity affects virtually everybody. It affects virtually everybody. And... Um, Playing politics with it will not, will not, will not help us. However, we understand where the box stops. We saw the press conference of the American president yesterday, where he took the blame for what happened in Kabul. In in Kabul, um, where he said the box stops on his table, and we know where the box stops. Whose table? The issue of security, protection of lives and property in this country resides. With. We know. Who appoints the inspector general of police? We know who appoints the, the service chiefs. We know who appoints people that heads the, the the various intelligence outfit that we have and the various security agencies that have. We all know quite all right that even the state governor does not have control over the police commissioner, even the posting and the rest of it over the police commissioner in the state that we have reviewed it. So, what if Gaba Ashew likes, let him. Let him write whatever statement. Let him start apportioning blames and saying that somebody is the one causing division. But by, by the time we are talking about administration, when you talk about public administration in Nigeria, um, people knew quite all right that 1999 to 2007 is a Basanjo's administration. Nobody knows some of the governors under our passenger Jones administration. People knew that it was Yadua between 2007 and 2010, Yadua Jonathan. And from 2010, 2011 to 2015, 2010 to 2015, it was Jonathan's administration. So from 2015 to 2023, it is history. They can write whatever press statement um, they want to write. It, it, it is history that will place everybody where they belong. It will be the president himself said it, I think, two weeks ago that he doesn't want the issue of insecurity, not dealing with it, to be his legacy, that he's going to ensure that it deals with the issue of insecurity. So let the likes. And the eeks of Gabashi will be doing what they are doing. They, they are not helping, they are not helping the matter. But the issue of security is clear for everybody to see. And we know who caused the shot in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. All right, Chide Johnson. I'm still talking about the People's Democratic Party. There's a story in the Guardian newspaper that says a new twist, court restores seconders as PDP chairman. On the Daily Independent newspaper, um, it also has that same story talking about the um, challenge between um, Secundus and the rest of the PDP. Well, we know that a River State High Court on Monday barred um, Secundus from parading himself as chairman of the, of the party. And then, you know, after that, Akin Wumi, you know, became the chairman of the, of the party. The PDP recognized him. Um, but then what we're seeing now is that the Kebi State High Court has basically reversed that judgment of a River State High Court saying Secundus is the chairman. So where does that now leave Akin Wumi, Secundus and the PDP? One of the challenges we have in Nigeria is the judiciary. Our courts of comparable status will be given conflicting, um, conflicting decisions. And then our and then how? Oh, that's the question you ask. And then the drama you see in PDP, just grab your popcorn, um, get your whatever you drink, and be ready for the drama that will happen in PDP and APC towards 2023, because this is not the end of having court orders. You remember when Modu Sheriff, Modu yeah. Sheriff, 
was the PDP's chairman and how they were getting different court orders when the guy insisted that he's the national chairman. So this drama that happened when the newspaper died in a new twist. It's not an old, it's not a new twist. In this in 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 the in the normal twist, in the in the character of the way PDP has been managed mm. since 1999. Uh, so you, you shouldn't be surprising to anybody that um, a KB State High Court will give an order and then invalidating the High Court order given by River State. So two state High Courts. So uh, which one should PDP recognize? Which one should we respect? As the judge in, I think, the Nigerian Judicial Council, needs to sanction judges with this type of judgment. You could see what happened in in um, in 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 Anambra State with respect to who is the candidate of Abga, who is the candidate of PDP, who is you know until and we have seen that drama playing out. The judiciary needs to help this country because in building a democratic society, you must have an independent fear, an independent and fair judicial system. Now, in a situation whereby the judiciary becomes part and parcel of the problem, this is the challenge that you have. So, who is the national chairman of PDP? Both parties are on crutches. Both parties. PDP, um, we don't know who the chairman is, whether it's because the drama will continue. For APC, you don't know who the national chairman of APC is, whether it's Bunu, my Bunu, or, or not, and time will tell. And we have seen how 2019 election threw up a lot of scenario that we didn't expect. Yeah, by candidates won election, there was an wholesome um, nullification of election across board, across offices in Zamfara State, whereby a party that came second was declared as the winner. That's PDP because the courts nullify the process. Why can't we? Why can't we resolve this pre-electoral issue before election and the issue of the national chairmanship? Why should you approach a court and say a chairman that has been elected for a tenor, you declare it's like a court waking up today and say that the tenor of the governor of Lagos State has expired? All right. It doesn't make any sense. You they can't don't... adjudicate on that matter. You can't adjudicate. All right. Because yes, we would have to wrap up. Um, yeah. uh, unfortunately, we would have to wrap up here uh, in the interest yeah. of time. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much, as always. We always enjoy your Friday morning analysis on uh, stories making the headlines. We, of course, wish you a great Friday and a great weekend ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be to be with you, and I'm sure that you have a wonderful, a wonderful day, and make sure you have time to relax this evening. We'll do our best. Stay yeah. with us here on The Breakfast. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're going back in history. I'm going back to the year 1985 to share with you about uh, a coup that took place on this day uh, that, of course, involves a lot of very popular names in Nigeria's political journey. And I'm going back to the year 1955 to tell you a, a bit of history about the Guinness Book of World Records. Stay with us.